Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well-focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites. We give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia, now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also time to give a shout out to our official sponsor, international award-winning author, Mia Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those who love be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Missing by Mia Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, along with Amazon, Audible, and Apple. And coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. 
And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a terrific actress, singer, activist, and also um, founder, and also um, just a very, very busy lady out of the California area. And um, she's a founder of Cat Kramer's um, Films That Changed the World. That's in its 10th anniversary. Also helps raise uh, important social issues um, that, that takes place in films and other projects. And uh, also involved in the Hollywood Media Professional Showcase. We'll talk more about that. Also featured in Turnover, Mother's Day's Memories, and um, working on a solo show. And, um, and it also opened up for uh, a few jazz legends and worked with um, a number of great people. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful sunny California. Ladies and gentlemen. The very, very, very multi-talented Catherine Cat Kramer. Cat, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. All of the above, Mike. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it really is sunny today in California, so I'm enjoying the sunshine and and talking to you. This is great. Well, actually, a pleasure to have you on board as well, too. So you're the founder of Cat Kramer's Films that changed the world. It's in its 10th anniversary, which is amazing. And your films, uh, other projects, help raise important social awareness issues. And also you're part of the Highway Media Professional Showcase and also um, involved in Turnover, Mother's Day Memories. You're also working on a solo show. And um, you also open up for, for quite a few um, jazz legends and some um, big names as well. And you also won some awards. And before we get into all that, tell us how I first got started, Kat. Um, well, I I was born into a film family, a show business family, um, but I don't think that's the reason I ended up in the entertainment industry, because mm -hmm. ac according to my mom, uh, actress Karen Sharp Kramer now, her, her maiden name is Sharp, and she was a really busy actress and a Golden Globe winner, and now she's a producer, and my father was um, filmmaker Stanley Kramer, and my godmother, who I'm named after, was uh, Catherine Hepburn. Oh, wow. So that right there are three big movie industry, uh, you know, people that really made a contribution. But according to my mother, I was born looking for my Klieg light and was singing and dancing and entertaining the family and, you know, wanted to be in show business even before I knew about my parents' background or about my godmother. So... I've been in the uh, entertainment industry as a performer, an actress, singer, dancer all of my life as a child performer. I was born in L.A., but my parents wanted to get me out of the entertainment industry and thought if we moved up to Seattle, Washington, because my father made a film up there on location, mm -hmm. it was actually his final film, The Runner Stumbles, um, they thought that you know I would change my mind and not go into the um not go into the family profession, but that didn't happen. I, I became even more bitten by the bug because Seattle has uh, quite a bit of theater there next to New York and Chicago. It's probably like the leading theater community in the country and also very progressive musically. A lot of rock bands uh, started there and a lot of just music and arts in general originate from Seattle. So I've been in the business all my life. Um, and spent time in New York and was working as a professional from an early age and moved back to L.A. Um, many years ago and was a Miss Golden Globe ambassador. Um, they now call it ambassador, but at that time it was Miss Golden Globe. It's still the same for the Hollywood Foreign Press and the Golden Globes, and that was kind of my entrance in, back into uh, Hollywood, so to speak, and I started performing right when we moved back, um, and I've always done one-person shows and solo shows, mm -hmm. and um, I don't really promote it that much, at the, but at the time, uh, the Cinegrill at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, the hotel is still there, but the Cinegrill was like the number one nightclub in town. That's no longer in existence, but I was the youngest performer to ever play there uh, since Mary Martin, the Broadway legend, had done back in the 40s, I think. Wow. Um, I'm not sure the years that she played there, but I had two sold-out one-person shows. They were like cabaret shows, but no, I didn't stick to a cabaret format. So I've always been an actress, singer, dancer, and started actually dancing 
So that's pretty much how I how I got started was just being in the arts and entertainment um, in many um, wearing many hats, you know, not just acting. And now, of course, I'm writing and producing and developing content and um, eventually want to direct like my father did, but I, I don't think I'm quite at that point yet. I'm still um, still trying to get, you know, projects out there from a producing standpoint. And um, on Turnover, the film you mentioned, which I'm very proud of, I'm a one of the stars of that. I'm also a co-producer on it. And that's a very independent film that has won a slew of awards. Um, I was happy to win for Best Supporting Actress for my role as Fran from the Love International Film Festival, which is truly an international film festival that celebrates independent film, but they, the nominees are from all over the globe. So I think I was the only only actress in that category from the United States, and I did end up winning and then the film had a theatrical release, and and it was going to be going wide, and then COVID struck, and so um, Turnover was eventually launched during the pandemic on Amazon Prime, and it, it, we had a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and wow. um, yeah, and tons and tons of um, you know fans of the film and support more than you know more than a lot of films that have big theatrical releases. So even though it was sad that we didn't have a wide release because of the pandemic, um, more people discovered it on Amazon Prime than they probably would go see it at the theater because mm. it's a very uh, little engine that could movie about diversity and inclusion. And it also has been um, moved now to like other platforms, but it launched on Amazon Prime. So that is the main place that people discovered it. Mm -hmm. And um, I also um, am in Mother's Day Memories, which is another social issue film. It's a short, but we're actually um, right now uh, submitted for consideration for an Academy Award in the live-action short category. So mm -hmm. I know it's a very competitive field and... Um, you know, hundreds of films submit every year, but uh, Mother's Day Memories is about Alzheimer's disease and the effects it has on families. And, you know, Alzheimer's and dementia are subjects that touch so many people's lives, and so it really has a universal message. And it's based on a true story. Um, I play Michelle, the wife of um, Bill Hoverston is the the creator of the film because it's really based on a uh, true story that happened between his mother and father and him and the relationship, how it changed when his mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. So it's a dramatized version of his story. And um, my character is really the one that is the voice of reason that really grounds the whole um, family dynamic. So it's also won a bunch of awards and, um, debuted at L.A. Shorts International, which is already Oscar qualifying. That's a very prestigious shorts film festival. Mm. So that also is now um, entering into the Oscar race, and, you know, we don't even know if it'll get nominated or not. Or, you know, we're trying to make the short list at this time, but the Oscars, because it's COVID, have now been postponed until April 25th. So, um, you know, all the voting and all the um, pro promotion for award season is really just now starting, and it'll be in full full swing over the next few months. Mm. It but um, they're both, you know, they both films have issues that I'm I'm acting in, and then um, with my screening series, I present socially conscious films and documentaries that hit on a number of social issues, and I'm also making films. Uh, under that banner of uh, films with social issue content. So in that sense, following in my father's footsteps of uh, social justice subjects in film, but um, he didn't make documentaries, and um, today it seems a lot of the films that really focus on the issues and bring them to the public's awareness uh, and really, you know, 
are not afraid to tackle the issues are done in the documentary genre. So um, mm-hmm. I'm going into that myself, but I'm also making fiction films, um, television content, a lot of a lot of projects in the animation space. I've got a pretty full slate of projects I'm developing. Wow. Um, yeah, and you know the interesting thing, uh, Mike, about turnover, as I mentioned earlier, um, we have um, talent in there that's that has disabilities. In the script originally, two of the supporting roles were written as Down syndrome characters, and so we cast Down syndrome actors in those roles. Mm-hmm. But I advocate on my own. I advocate for the deaf community. Um, and the disabilities community. One reason for that is because I played Helen Keller uh, on stage when I was 11 years old and end up, ended up winning a, a theatrical award in Seattle for Best Actress. Wow, amazing. And of course, Helen Keller was blind, deaf, and mute, so I really, you know, relate. I mean, it made an impression on me that she didn't have those senses, and yet, you know, she became such an icon and, 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 and paved the way for you know, uh, people with disabilities being able to communicate with Braille and also um, American Sign Language. So also my father cast a lot of the real um, people in his films. For instance, he made a film called A Child is Waiting about mentally retarded kids and uh, children with Down syndrome, and he cast, you know, real Down syndrome and retarded children in, in the roles. They weren't even actors, so that made me very uh, sympathetic to authenticity in casting. Mm -hmm. And um, in turnover, because I advocate a lot for the deaf in entertainment, and I've done a lot of work along with, um, you know, people that founded Deaf West, and um, I work a lot with bringing awareness and accessibility to the entertainment industry and have films open captioned for my screening series and invite, you know, deaf talent to come and, and participate and experience a screening with a Q&A. And I have had ASL interpreters for the past, I don't know, going on almost since the founding of my series. I mean, I started doing it midway through, but I've kind of been on the leading um championing that in Hollywood because there's just so much talent in the deaf and blind community that are actually, especially in the deaf community, that are actually creating content, but they never have a chance to be involved with mainstream audiences. Mm -hmm. And so I always make sure that they're accessible. Well, when I got cast in Turnover and they brought me on as a co-producer, um... The director, co-writer Linda Palmer, asked me, did I think since we had two Down Syndrome characters, would it be a good idea to also include a deaf character? And I said, yeah, that would be great. So she rewrote the script for that character, Julie. When you see the film, you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. was a hearing character originally, but she turned it into a deaf character. And I said, but you have to cast a deaf actress in the role. You know, you can't take an actress that was already somewhat cast in the role and then have her pretend to be deaf. You have to actually have a deaf actress. So I was involved with the sessions, um, the audition process, and cast Raquel McPeak, uh, who's a deaf actress, um, in the role. But that's so much now becoming more a part of the mainstream. I mean, there's films like Sound of Metal on Amazon, which is uh, in the running now for Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor. And that's all about a, a rock musician, heavy metal musician, who loses his hearing and has to then learn American Sign Language and become a part of deaf culture and actually, you know, accept the fact that he's deaf. And I thought that was such an interesting way of um, bringing the the issue to the forefront that, it's about a hearing person who loses his hearing, so that way not only people that are born deaf, but also those that are hard of hearing or become deaf later in life or at some point in their life can relate to it. 
Mm -hmm. And um, that I was, I have to say, very much at the forefront of not just including the deaf community in projects where there's deaf characters and making it accessible for them, but making sure that they have a chance to see a film and and experience a panel or a Q&A, which I moderate, uh, even if the subject of the movie is not about the deaf culture or doesn't have any deaf characters. Mm-hmm. And one example is I, you know, Lily Tomlin, who's the ambassador for my screening series, she's also my performing idol, mm-hmm. um, made a film, Grandma, a few years ago. I think you might remember that. Mm-hmm. And um, I chose that film to have an open caption screening, and I inter- uh, ha- I moderated an ASL interpreted panel and the audience was industry, but it was, you know, 50% hearing, 50% deaf. And so they all got a chance to experience deaf culture and the way it's made accessible uh, through the screening process and the Q&A process. And that was the first time they'd ever had uh, an open caption screening on a studio lot. I had it at Sony Studios because Grandma was Sony Pictures Classics. And the main reason that I um, selected that, you know, because Lily is the ambassador for my screening series, but also because in her film debut of Nashville, Robert Altman's Nashville, she um, played the mother of two deaf children, and she used American Sign Language in her screen debut. So she's already a hearing, you know, able-bodied, iconic actress who's recognized by the deaf community as one of their own, so to speak, because she used sign language in her first film. So it was tying that together. Um, And even though there's no deaf characters in Grandma, it gave the deaf audiences a chance to experience the film in the Q&A in a way that they wouldn't normally. Mm. So that's another way that my screening series really uh, is groundbreaking and really trying to be as inclusive as possible and not just present films with issues of like women's empowerment, environmental justice, animal rights, um, LGBTQ and anti-bullying films about um, that, but also disabilities being accepted and the films don't even have to be about that, but they're all invited to participate in the screenings and the Mm Q&As. So I'm very proud about that uh, push for diversity and inclusion. Mm-hmm. That, that is so amazing. I mean, you just really, really have been groundbreaking. I've just been moved by this whole thing. And one thing that came to mind, you talk about these social issues that you present um, in all these movies, and you, you touched on a lot of them. What first inspired you to um, to to, uh, to have these uh, issues uh, presented in movies? So what, what was the first? So basically what what I'm asking is, is like, you know, what first motivated you to um, to have movies involving social issues? Well, I think it's because my father made 35 socially conscious films and they were movies with a message, but he didn't want to be labeled as a message filmmaker. He was just very interested in in, um, you know, subjects that had not been explored on film and maybe subjects that were ahead of their time or taboo or, you know, controversial. And I think it's just part of my DNA. Um, I've just always been drawn to socially conscious projects and socially conscious issues in film and how film can really change the world and make a difference. And my screening series, um, I founded it in 2009. So it actually is a little bit over 10 years, but... Um, because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to officially celebrate the 10th anniversary, which I kicked it off in 2018, but I wanted to, um, because I've had 10 installments, but I wanted to have the 10th anniversary, um, which really was last year, officially um, continue on as a mini film festival. And because of of COVID, I, I wasn't able to do it, so it's been postponed until this year and uh, my very first screening was um, in 2009 during Women's History Month for only a hundred people primarily female we had a few male but I wanted to 
focus on the women's equality issue, and the film I selected was Yentl, which is not a documentary, but it was Barbara Streisand's pioneering movie where she really, you know, broke the glass ceiling for women behind the camera, where mm. she directed, wrote, starred in, produced and also sang all the songs. I mean, it was a groundbreaking film. It was also very much about women's equality. So that's the reason I selected that for my kickoff. And then the second film I presented was The Cove, which won, it ended up winning Best Documentary Feature. Nice. And I had something to do with that because I got behind the campaign. Um, that was all about the dolphin slaughter in Taiji, Japan. And, oh, yes. Oh, you my know, gosh, very, yes. Very, very famous film. But the Academy voters, you know, as you may know, are a little bit different than all the other guilds. And a lot of the voters in that documentary um, branch and the um, voters at large that were voting for that in that category – didn't want to see the animal cruelty and the slaughter because there's like five minutes worth of it's pretty um, hard to watch. But, I mean, you have to if you're going to see the film and get the message. So right. what I did was I invited all those members to this big – I had a big, huge screening event. It was really the DVD release for the film on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. and um, And all the filmmakers flew over. They weren't even – scheduled to be in town yet because the Oscars was about a week or so later, but the, was, the voting was ending like the next day. So I invited all those Academy members, and I also invited not only, you know, a lot of celebrity hosts, because I've had that since the beginning, but a five-year-old activist who had seen The Cove dozens of times, and he got up and, and moved the audience to tears by saying, if I can see this movie and I can advocate on behalf of the dolphins and I can watch the slaughter and and understand how wrong this practice is and how cruel it is then certainly adults must be able to do it mm -hmm. and because of that they all watched the film and voted on it and and then I went um, with the filmmakers to the Oscars it ended up winning I went with them to the after parties and um, about a week later after it or maybe it was less than a week but it was a few days after the Cove actually won um, they had done a sting operation at the Hump Restaurant in Santa Monica, which was a, a pretty popular restaurant, but it was they believed it was serving um, whale meat illegally, and so they performed a, a sting operation, and it was exposed, and so the, we shut down the Hump Restaurant by having a protest out in front. Wow. And it got worldwide coverage, and... So from then on, my cinema series, which just started with 100 Women for Yentl, when I followed it with the co for the second screening event, now it was on the map. <laughs> and my third <laughs> one really brought it home. I continued with the wildlife advocacy and animal rights issues by having a film about elephants in captivity and primarily how they're treated in zoos and circuses called Elephants and Man, A Litany of Tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I had Lily Tomlin, who is uh, was already a big advocate uh, saving elephants. Cher, who also was, was part of the campaign to free Billy the Lone Asian Elephant at the L.A. Zoo. And then Tippi Hedren, who, you know, is a well-known animal rights activist and has Shambhala. Those were my three ho main hosts. And um, Lily became the main ambassador for my series, and we ended up doing radio and television together to promote the issues. And so she hosted that one and participated on my panel, and then she ended up doing several after that, all different issues. But um, she's really been, you know, such a great supporter and participant and has really gotten my screening series um, as a branded known entity, and I'm going to be doing a lot more outreach programs with it in the future. I even established an award um, called the Hunt for Humanity Award, mm -hmm. which is named for Marsha Hunt, um, who's actually, she just turned 103. Wow, amazing. Uh, back in October. But she was really the first activist, uh, an actress who used her fame and... Um, and name value to be very involved with 
charities and humanitarian causes and social issues and has lived her life as a humanitarian. So she was the first recipient, obviously, because the award was named in her honor. But there will be uh, another recipient um, coming up that will be the second one. And then I'm also going to have a Shiro Award because my theme for the 10th is Shiro's for Change. Mm -hmm. And it's basically films about women made by women focusing on women's issues and women's empowerment and, um, you know, advocating for equal rights. Uh, I know the 100th anniversary of the suffragette movement was last year, so that's mm-hmm. <laughs> going to Oh, my that gosh. On time, now. time flies, but I'll tell you that. I <laughs> can't believe it, but, you know, it's, wow. it's so much better to be uh, looking to the future and embracing the virtual world. I mean, I'm going to have a mini film festival, which I've never done. I've always just had one one movie each time I've done an installment. There was only one time I had a short film and also a feature, but for the most part they've all been, you know, big premieres with panels that I moderate and and star power, but I also uh, bring call to action with the panels and the Q&As, and um, I'm going to be doing a selection of films. I just haven't set the date yet. But I'm also going to be doing a new outreach program called New Voices for Change, mm-hmm. where I'm going to be presenting um, excerpts or, or uh, sections of new screenplays that are also unproduced films that have social issues, and these are films that I would like to uh, produce in the future. So it's it's kind of different because most people will have a um, a table reading. They'll be either virtual or live, but they'll be table readings. Most organizations have had um, hosted table readings for famous plays and famous movies to raise money, but I'm going to be doing it backwards, having new works, new voices for change, writers that, you know, really explore social issues in their scripts. And then these films will eventually, hopefully, uh, be funded and get out there through my screening series. But I'll probably direct the um, table readings and also play a role in them. And um, it'll be very interesting to see what develops. But I'm really hoping to do that this year as well. So it'll be a big uh, big 10th anniversary launching that outreach program and also continuing on with the mini festival and the awards. Wow. So, I mean, I really would like to do that by December 2021 <laughs> and um, kind of announcing it here because it hasn't been officially announced yet. Uh huh. And, of course, we'll talk uh, more about that as well, too, and also your um, – your um your Hollywood uh, Media Professional Showcase, and before we talk about that, just one more thing that just popped to mind here: of all the social issues uh, that you had addressed um, during your time with movies and everything, what issues would you say or issue you considered the most challenging, and what are some of the issues that have not been addressed as of yet? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, I'm always trying to focus on films that have issues that I haven't addressed yet, and there's just so many issues out there. Um, the, certainly environmental justice and the climate and the saving our planet and the wildlife protection and conservation would be an ongoing, it's always a big challenge, but that would be an ongoing issue. And also, um, you know, the issue of homelessness, Mm, which yes. is becoming even more and more of a problem. I, I'm actually addressing that issue in my new solo show, but that's still in development. Okay. Um, but I would like to, uh, there's been a number of films that have come to my attention, and um, new ones, obviously, that are, you know, in the process of being uh, completed that deal with the homeless issue. And that's been a a topic that, you know, has been a, as I mentioned, something that has never really been solved properly. So I would love to present that, uh, the homeless issue, in either a film or a series of films. Mm -hmm. And also um, continuing on with disabilities, um, because I focus so much on deaf rights, but I would like to 
explore uh, films that are also about other disabilities and, um, you know, the authenticity of casting. There's a film called Cinemability, which is m made by a, a woman filmmaker who is disabled named Jenny Gold. And this film traces the history of disabilities in media and in film and television since the early days of the medium. And um, I will present that film at some point. And it's already won a number of awards. But wow. um, a couple of my father's films are in there because he also made The Men, which was Marlon Brando's debut, mm -hmm. where he played a paraplegic. Amazing. And my father cast real paraplegics in the other roles. And also in Ship of Fools, he had a, a Michael Dunn was a little person. And then, of course, A Child is Waiting, which I mentioned uh, previously. But um, Ship of Fools and The Men are both featured in Cinemability, as are a lot of films uh, from The Miracle Worker to Ray to My Left Foot, um, you know, films and um content that shows disabled characters. So I think that that's definitely one that I need to focus on and bring in more films that um, hit on those issues. Mm -hmm. And of course, those are just two of the ones. Wow, that is amazing. I love to have it back on before December 2021 and talk more about that. We'll also talk about the Hollywood Media Professional Showcase, your work in park as solo show, and a lot more. But first, to listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give a shout-out to our official sponsor, international award-winning author Mia Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Missing by Mia Mosin Zia, available on Amazon. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. And follow The Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with um, actress, director, activist, and um, just about everything under the sun, Catherine Cat Kramer here on The Mike Wagner Show. She's the founder of Cat Kramer's Films That Changed the World in its 10th anniversary and talked really in depth about all the films that uh, she's worked with and also addressing a number of issues. And um, also she's been in some films. We'll, um, we'll get to that. But uh, we'll also talk about the Hollywood Media Professional Showcase, which um, you're very proud to be in. And um, tell us all about that and uh, how did you uh, first get started with it? Well, thank you so much for mentioning that because I'm sure you'll be very interested um, the Hollywood Media Professionals is actually the new name of Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you must be familiar with them, um, and actually you should be a member, Mike, if you're not already. Oh, really? Uh, Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters was actually founded by Art Gilmore in 1966, mm -hmm. so it's been around for over 50 years, and celebrates uh, icons of broadcasting, entertainment, television, media. And um, I performed for Lily Tomlin. As I mentioned to you, she's my performing idol and also the ambassador for Cat Creamer's Films That Changed the World. Uh, Lily was one of the many honorees with the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters a few years ago. And, um, you know, there, we, we have exclusive luncheons for the members honoring everyone from Lily to Ed Asner to the late Regis Philbin to Barbara Eden 
to Donna Mills, to Engelbert Humperdinck, to Henry Winkler, uh, Dick Van Dyke. I mean, you name it, anyone who's ever really made their mark in entertainment and broadcasting and television. There, there, and We've even honored sports sports figures. Wow. Um, and the reason I say we is because when I performed the salute for, I performed a musical salute for Lily, an original musical parody salute, um, when she was honored by the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters at their Pioneer Luncheon um, back in, it was actually in 2012, so it's a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They asked me to perform and open the program, and I sat on the dais with you know, legends in the business that have been a part of her career, from George Slaughter to Joanne Worley to Bruce Valanche to the late Gary Owens and a lot of her, you know, laughing, uh, the cast there, and mm -hmm. obviously George Slaughter, the creator of the show, mm -hmm. and Leslie Jordan and Sally Kellerman and the late Allie Willis. These, this was the dais. And... Um, you know what I did with the with the performance made such an impact that they asked me to join the board. So I've been on the board for a few years, but it had always been an idea with the executive board to create a new YouTube channel, um, highlighting excerpts and moments from these luncheons that have been you know private only for the members. They've never been seen by the public, mm -hmm. and to have a channel. Where, where the fans, the historians, students, members, and the public and fans of the stars can also enjoy them. So we launched, uh, we, first we changed our name to Hollywood Media Professionals just to be more inclusive and more up-to-date. And I was brought on to bring younger members because mm -hmm. um, they are, you know, they're all, a lot of them are um, quite a bit older and have been in the business a long time, and a lot of them are retired, but it's a, great group and we used to have four luncheons a year so you can imagine from the time it started and they started filming them i don't think they filmed them in the beginning but they filmed them since the 80s or 90s and i've only been uh on the board for like three years wow having performed that a few years ago when you think about all the different luncheons four of them a year um you think about all the great people they've honored, you have a, an archival history there. So we launched the HMP Celebrity Showcase YouTube channel just on December 6th of last year. Lily Tomlin was their first honoree of the month. I opened the whole channel with my salute to her. And so anybody can go and, and look at the channel. Right now, Rich Little is our honoree of the month. Mm hmm and then next month in February will be the late Carl Weiner. Uh -huh. And coming up after that would be George Slaughter um, in um, March, Wink Martindale in April, and I believe Fred Willard in May. And then they'll have the summer program announced uh, in the next couple of months. And, you know, a lot of the people I mentioned who've been honored, from Barbara Eden to Henry Winkler, will be the honoree of the month uh, as the channel continues. Is truly an evergreen channel. That's what I love about it. Because once, <laughs> once the episodes are up, it's there forever, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, Hollywood media professionals, um, uh, it's a division of the Pacific Pioneer Broadcasters. So it's still the PPB, as it's affectionately known in the industry, but just with a new name. And HMP also elevates to promote media and music through education and mentorship. So... Mm -hmm. Any uh, person who's just getting into the industry and joins will have at their fingertips the, the, the knowledge of all the members that have been in the business, you know, all their lives, basically. Uh -huh. And there's so many great um, educational um, opportunities for one to learn and grow. They also have um, other events called Coffee With. Mm-hmm which um, will feature, like a Wink Martindale, um, and only 50 people in a room where they can have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with whoever the, the uh, guest is. However, when the pandemic happened, as you can imagine, there were no luncheons, no coffee with, nothing, and this was the only way that we could keep the Hollywood media professionals 
uh, alive was by creating this new channel, which is totally free. Uh, the best thing to do is just, I think the easiest way for you and, and, and the listeners to, to be able to access it is go to YouTube and just type in uh, HMP Celebrity Showcase, just the initials, capital HMP Celebrity Showcase, and it pops up. Also on the website, there is a link and a press release about it, and that's hmpwebsite.org. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's just a great thing. It's a weekly series. Every Sunday a new episode is launched. And every month there's a new honoree. So, for example, with Lily, I was the first episode. And then Bruce Valanche was episode two. And then they combined George Slaughter and the late Gary Owens for episode three. And then Lily herself and making her acceptance speech at the podium was episode four. Mm -hmm. So at the end of, the, of each month, the honoree, whoever the honoree of the month is, will be accepting the Art Gilmore Award and making their speech. So it's really an insider's look to what being part of the Hollywood Media Professionals is and also encourages new members and is also an educational resource for those in the industry and the public at large can enjoy these. Mm. So I'm just really happy to be a part of it. And... Um, and I'm really proud that I was the kickoff episode as well. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> of course, we'd be in call Cat Kramer. That's actually a perfect way to do it. So, <laughs> and, and of course, you know, you talked about Lily Tomlin a lot as well, too. I remember her, you know, back in the day, you know, she was an opera. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Right, right. I actually imitate Ernestine and Edith Ann in my... Um, salute to her really you have to, you'll have to see that i did like a little homage yes yeah <laughs> i remember that so well and i remembered um laughing you know as a kid as well too and um of course you're permitted to watch it and was it uh, you bet your sweet bippy and artie yes, johnson's like yeah. <laughs> and i think is that where goldie hawn also made her debut or something if i remember I think so yeah goldie hawn was really the first um first uh cast member off of laughing to really hit you know, and then Lily followed soon after. Lily didn't even join until, um, I believe it was the third season. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then so, cause it was launched in 1967, and Lily didn't join until 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually December uh, 29th of 1969. And so by, 19, by January 1970, Ernestine was a household person. <laughs> And um, and then Lily followed it up with Edith Ann. So those really are her two best-known characters. But she's created so many amazing characters and has really been an inspiration for me in creating characters for my uh, solo shows. <laughs> and also for the uh, web series I was on, Child of the 70s, mm -hmm. we actually uh, no longer, that web series uh, we finished, um, it, only, it was only on for five seasons that I was able to create multiple characters in season uh, three, four, and five. Mm -hmm. Wow. But anyway, uh, for anyone in the entertainment industry or broadcasting, uh, HMP Celebrity Showcase is the place to go to really have like a Friars Club, you know, um, experience watching these amazing speakers on the dais and then leading up to, um, to the honorees' remarks. And I was the only one to do any kind of musical numbers really so my musical salute to her and she's not even a musical star but mm -hmm. uh i don't want to give too much of it away you really need to see it um lily is also very proud of it because she's never had anyone do uh perform or create a salute for her quite like this wow and um and i do specialize in um parodies and you know i mentioned that my godmother was katherine hepburn and i have a whole song that I have in my solo show, but it's also a standalone piece called Catherine with an A, that I imitate her in there as a character, Auntie Kate, mm -hmm. because she always spelled her name with an A, K-A-T-H-A-R-I-N-E, and I'm also K-A-T-H-A-R-I-N-E, and she says, uh, you'll be forever telling them, spell it with an A. <laughs> so I did a parody of Liza with the Z called Catherine with an A. Um, 
in my debut of this this solo show, and I'm continuing that song on, um, which is uh, me and my godmother dueling, you know, who's going to outdo the other, (laughs) (laughs) spelling the name with an A. And that's kind of why I go by Kat, because um, people knew her as Kate Hepburn, but also close friends knew her as Kat. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I've always just called myself Cat because unless they spell it with a C, it's very hard to misspell Cat, K A T. So, and, and I still and like I'm, mine as an I also am a cat person. I love cats, and I'm developing I'm developing a project about um, shelter pets, and it's an animal rescue project, and and the cat. A cat is the star character. But oh, my so gosh. That's all now. perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, of course, <laughs> with all the projects that you're in, we'll talk about your uh, solo show, and it's going to be very interesting. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, Definitely. I quoted Artie Johnson, and uh, we love you up there. <laughs> yeah, he just passed away not too long ago. So. Oh, he's still one of my favorites. Yeah. And don't forget the... We, We got to mention Ruth Buzzy as well, too. It's like she was like another hit on the show. Ruth Buzzy. How do you like that? And, and of course, I can still imagine her. It's like, you didn't include me, and she's hitting me on the head with a purse still. I can feel it. Ow! (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she was so much the spirit of laughing. You know, it's amazing. (laughs) And uh, it's amazing to um, have performed that also because, with George Slaughter sitting there on the dais with that I shared the dais with him, and I was the youngest person on the dais, but to be able to open the the whole tribute to Lily with this salute was quite a an amazing moment in my life and career. I'll always remember, and I'm so happy that it's on the channel now for everybody to see and be actually on a channel that represents uh, Pacific Pioneer broadcasters now called Hollywood Media Professionals. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. that That is very amazing. We'll talk about your uh, solo show in just a few minutes. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. And also brought to you by our official sponsor, international award-winning author, Mian Mohsen Zia of the book Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with Catherine Cat Kramer after this timeout on The Mike Wagner Show. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout-out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. It's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We are back with actress, activist, and the very multi-talented Catherine Cat Kramer here on the Mike Wagner Show. She's the founder of Cat Kramer's Films that Changed the World, celebrated the 10th anniversary, also talked about the Hollywood Media Professionals um, Showcase. 
former the uh, Pacific um, Pacific uh, broadcasters. And yet, I have to say, it's a very, very amazing. Just having a great time with uh, Kat Kramer. And you also got a solo show that's uh, coming out as well, too. And um, tell us more about that. Well, it's interesting because I um, have done a lot of solo shows. And this one is... Um was developed through Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival, which is the only theater festival in L.A. that's developing women's solo shows. And actually, um, their mission is to, you know, create um, and give a showcase to solo performers around the world, but all females. So, and I actually joined the advisory board um, for them, um, and I also debuted my solo show um, at the Actors Gang in Culver City through Los Angeles Women's Theater Festival. And it's called My Duet with Mick. And it is about my dream of singing a duet with Mick Jagger. Because oh, wow. That <laughs> idol. Yeah, and I actually covered uh, his solo songs. I don't know if you know, but Mick Jagger and Keith Richards both the Glimmer Twins, you know, the, the mm-hmm. songwriting duo and the the leaders of the Rolling Stones. Um, oh, yeah. And, yes. Uh, and, 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 of course, many of us grew up with it, with them as well, too. And um, I had the privilege of seeing them in um, Alpine Valley, I think, when they were Steel Wheels Tour. It's like when, once you've seen oh, the yeah, Rolling Stones, you've seen just about— tours. Yes, that's right. And a very funny story, you know, just wanted to um, share it as well, too. I worked with a guy at a radio station back around the Chicago area. I was enjoying a day off, and he called me up, and I thought, do I have to fill in again? And he asked me, what are you doing? I says, nothing. He says, I have an next ticket to go see Rolling Stones. You want to go? And I'm like, sure, I'm sure why not? How much? What do I got to do? Just buy us some beer. And you get a free ticket. It's like, okay. So we go up to Alpine Valley in Wisconsin. He's the one that drove. And my job was to buy the beer. And that was it. We got in. Great show. And that was it. It was because his uh, girlfriend's best friend couldn't make it. So here we are. Oh, it's like, you're so lucky. Wow. <laughs> and, and I just I've pay, never, and I pay I've for a price of beer. <laughs> the Stones. Well, I've been going to see the Stones. Um, I've always been a huge fan. In fact, my father used to get me Stones records and CDs, and that's how I um, how I ended up loving them because I've always been into all kinds of music. But I love classic rock and roll. But the Stones have always been um, my leading band, you know, more than the Beatles or the Who. I'm very much into British Invasion, classic rock. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the real the real rock, as I call it, not. <laughs> I don't oh. want to get into that. But anyway, there's nothing better than the Stones or a Stones concert. And uh, I've always felt that Mick Jagger himself was underrated as a lyricist and a songwriter because he's produced and written a lot of his own um, solo recordings through the years. So has Keith Richards, but mm-hmm. Keith has only, only had two solo albums. Mick's had many. And I've always felt that he... Um, was underrated just on his own as a uh, songwriter. So I covered a lot of songs that are obscure that no one's ever covered from some of his solo albums, and I've covered a few obscure uh, Rolling Stones songs and one Keith Richards solo song and put together an album called Gemstone, Mm -hmm. um, which is still coming out. It's still not finished. I've been working on it for a while, and it's gotten some airplay, but um, I wanted to see if I could, you know, build a solo show around it, but I wasn't necessarily keen on singing the songs from the album in the solo show. So, but I wanted to have some kind of a journey uh, on stage about my quest to get Mick Jagger to sing a duet with me or at least play harmonica or something on my CD. So that was the genesis of the idea and it grew into something much more a fantasy kind of parody of the wizard of oz where mick is like the wizard he's sir mick mick of jagger and that um it's my quest i go on rolling stones road to gemstone city to try and get to the great sir mick of jagger to do a duet with me and it's the journey of the characters i meet along the way so wow that's the show but i'm actually revamping it and adding characters to it and it's ever evolving so the new incarnation of my duet with mick 
um, which may be called She's a Rainbow, which is also oh, wow. a Stone song. Um, that will be debuting um, in the next two years. I don't, I don't have a date because I'm workshopping it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did, uh, I did sing one Stone song in my preview performance. I've actually performed a preview of it and a condensed version. And um, as tears go by, you know, which was the one that Marianne Faithful sang that they wrote and she recorded it. That mm-hmm. was in my original um, preview of my duet with Mick. So I actually did something a little different. I combined that as a medley with the song Neverland from Peter Pan. Wow. Because in my duet with Mick, it is a fantasy, Mike. It's, it's a parody of The Wizard of Oz. So, you know, Dorothy ends up going over the rainbow, but she's not unconscious. And really, it's a big dream that she has. So this is my dream. It's it's like I, what I had in, in the preview performance was that there's an earthquake that knocks me out. Mm-hmm. And then I go into a dream sequence of um, going to uh, Gemstone City over Rolling Stones Road. So Wow. And the, everything in there was the Stones reference. All the characters. There's a Ru- I play a character named Ruby Tuesday, who's a hippie <laughs> chick, who's nice. kind of Glinda the Good Witch. So you get the idea. But there's going to be a lot more characters, including a villainous character, um, not a wicked witch, but you know one that one that causes me a little conflict on my journey. You have to have conflict. <laughs> have to have conflict or I'm melting. Or Don't story. melt me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I so can. You'll you'll find out more as it evolves, but um, but yeah, I'm very proud of what I did so far, and it's, um, you know, looking up to Lily, who's the queen of the genre of one person shows, um, and the first female to have a Broadway solo show with appearing nightly. She always workshopped all of her uh, shows around the country before she brought them to New York or any main market and so that's what i'd like to do as well Mm -hmm. and um, i have a film project along with it so we'll see what happens with that Mm -hmm. uh, how that develops wow that's definitely a labor of love Mm -hmm. it it sounds like a huge labor of love and i can see mick right now um when when, uh, you come to that uh, big stage i am oz (laughs) right we know there's a mick jagger center that he uh has his Name on in London, which is an educational, like, uh, connected to a school and a performing arts center, and I would love to perform my show there. And also at the Kate, which is um, the Catherine Hepburn Cultural Arts Center in Connecticut, is actually a performing arts center named after my godmother, and she's a character in the show, Auntie Kate, kind of the Auntie M, uh, mm-hmm. Auntie M you know, counterpart in the parody. I would uh-huh. absolutely love to do this show with those two venues. Mm-hmm. And I have a whole list of uh, venues I'd like to perform it at, but those would be two, like, I don't even want to say bucket list. I mean, just <laughs> goals that I would, it, it would fit there and it would be great to have the experience of performing it at the space where two of the characters, um, and the subject of my show has a presence, so that would just be amazing. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds amazing. And, of course, you know, to to be seen and determined, the lion, the scarecrow, the tin man, and don't right. forget Toto. Yes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I have all kinds of ideas of who those characters will be because I didn't show them in the uh, in the first incarnation. Mm-hmm. So, but there will be uh, characters to fill those those roles for sure Mm -hmm. and and that's so amazing we're looking forward to all that and i'm sure you got plenty of other projects we'd love to have you back on before uh december of um this year you can talk more projects what you got in 2022 and if you want to do 23 that's fine as well too and um and of course uh lastly where can we uh find all your um films at where can we find uh hollywood media professional showcase and also um turn over mother's day memories at where can we find those well, I have two websites, so there's content on there. Uh, one is katherinekramer.com, and the other website is uh, for my screening series, Cat Kramer's Films That Change the World.com. 
and eventually I'll combine them into one website, but for now I have two, two separate websites that have a lot of content. Um, I also have tons of Facebook pages, and I'm on Twitter and social media. Um, for Hollywood media professionals, they have a website, hmpwebsite.org, or the best place to find the channel, which is the most uh, exciting attraction happening right now because you know, we can't have any in-person events, so everything's happening online with right. the channel. Mm -hmm. You just go to YouTube and search for HMP Celebrity Showcase. Um, turnovers on Amazon Prime, on uh, YouTube, Google Play, and um, Tubi TV. But I think the best place to find it is on, you know, on Amazon Prime. If uh, for whoever is a member, that's the easiest place to see it. And Mother's Day Memories has a website, uh, Mother's Day Memories dot com, uh, and the film is up there. And then there's a trailer. Um, is also on the social media and on Facebook under Mother's Day Memories. So probably the easiest way to find it is to go to the Facebook page, Mother's Day Memories, and the link to the website is there if, um, if anyone has a problem finding the website. Uh, there shouldn't be a problem, but because it is a Mother's Day Memories, there could be many websites with that title. It's probably best to find it through the Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we certainly will do that. Once again, we're with um, actress and also uh, activist and director and very multi-talented, Catherine Kat Kramer here on the Mike Wagner Show. Kat, very, very thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. And before we go, we'd love to have you back on in 2021 and beyond. And who do you consider your biggest influence in your career, Kat? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I don't know because there's so many influences Probably my uh, my godmother Catherine Hepburn, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom, dad, and also Lily Tomlin. Uh, now looking at where my career is going, I would say those are the biggest influences. Mm -hmm. But I've had so many role models and idols throughout my life that it would be hard to you know I couldn't list all of them. Mm -hmm. But I'll just go with those for now. Those are the current. Um, influences mm -hmm. and, and very impressive as well and what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point um well right now uh advice for what getting into the industry or... it, it can be advice in general um well wear a mask i guess until, <laughs> until the vaccines are until they're uh you know i i take it very seriously i've i know a lot of people that have lost loved ones to COVID, and I've lost a few friends myself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the best just advice now. But to get into the entertainment industry, which I'm asked all the time, uh, I would say you have to really want to do it because it's a lot of work and it takes all your 100% commitment and passion. And I would say create your own content um, is the best way of going. And don't wait for somebody to hire you, create your own uh, projects and follow your own vision. Mm -hmm. And that's very important as well. Once again, Catherine Kat Kramer here on the Mike Wagner Show. Kat, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Very inspiring. Looking forward to having you again soon. Just keep us up to date. Love you back on. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people uh, check out your works, including your movies and also the Hollywood Media Professional Showcase? Well, the best uh, would be the website cat uh, cat films that change the world dot com and Catherine Kramer dot com and uh, on Facebook uh, Catherine Kramer is my it's actually Catherine Cat Kramer but if you go to Catherine Kramer that's my main home page so those would be the main places. Okay, that's very amazing. Once again, Kat, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. And don't forget to keep in touch. I was just, I felt like I went to school after learning from you. I mean, it's, I oh, mean wow. you're just fantastic, you. yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, I'd love to be back. 
The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and Increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.